In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Holy Gospel reading for this morning uses the word love a number of times. So how do you define love? How do you know when someone has love for you? And how do you show someone that you love them? And then again, where is God in all of this? How does He show love for us or for any part of His creation? Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You know his commandments. There's only ten of them. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the Holy Ten Commands. To keep them is to love God. To break them is to love yourself more than God and more than your neighbor. To break them is to sin, and to open yourself up to both death and damnation. To keep them is impossible because each of us is conceived and born under the curse of sin, which prompts us to turn away from loving God and loving our neighbors. As a result, you don't keep them, and neither do I. What does that mean about our love for God, or for our neighbors, or for ourselves? We cannot and do not keep God's commandments, and this is why He sent a Savior in the person of His Son, Jesus Christ. He entered our world and our flesh for the purpose of saving us from our sin, which kills and damns us. He knew that we could not and do not keep His commandments, although our inability to keep them does not excuse us from the punishment we deserve and does not offer us an escape from that which follows our sin in this life. Each of us will die. A virus now surrounds us that reminds us of this difficult truth, and keeps us from making use of our sanctuary here, as it has been used every week for far longer than any of us has ever has been alive. And so this is why we need help. This is why we need what our Savior promises. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. What Jesus speaks of here is the promise of an indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which begins for us in his gift of holy baptism. For many of us, this took place shortly after we were born, because when we were born, we were candidates of receiving the promise of what our Savior opened to us by taking on the same flesh that we know and live in. He came here for the purpose of saving us, and he did it by redeeming by buying back our sin-stained flesh. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate. He is therefore no stranger to anything that we face in this world. He even went to death on the cross to make the payment for our sin as he gave up his body and shed his blood to atone for the ways that we do not love God or our neighbors as we break his commandments in a far deeper love for ourselves rather than anyone around us. We need a help, then, that comes from outside of us, and this is exactly what Jesus promises us through his external gifts of word and sacrament, which he established in the new covenant under which we live while he fulfilled the old covenant that anticipated his coming into the world. And he continues, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Orphans have no father and no mother to turn to. They are alone and helpless. They're dependent on local authorities and the love of those who did not know them until they came into their home. This is certainly love, and any orphan who receives it is undoubtedly grateful for it. But each of us can be sure that our Lord will not and does not leave us in that seemingly hopeless state. He sends his helper, the third person of the Holy Trinity, and he comes to us at the font of holy baptism as we are adopted into the family of all believers and made a part of the body of Christ. We are at a point now that we cannot come together in the place that has been the home in which our Savior meets us through His means of grace. 
though developments last week indicate that this time may be drawing to a close. The font at which many of you were baptized and the altar from which you are fed each week in public worship is not visible or available to more than nine of us at a time, at least right now. Even still, we are coming together in our parking lot or through recorded services available online or through the short communion services that we hold in our sanctuary. And this is how Jesus' promise is made good through his church. The church will not be overcome by anything, even the powers of hell itself. And so we continue on in these less than desirable ways. We look forward to the day that we can all be together, but until then, we make good with what is before us. We are not left alone, even as our Lord Jesus Christ assures us. He says, yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. A little while, in the Lord's view, is a mystery to us. He created time. He is outside of it. He sets, us before it. he sets it before us, and we live under it, while also looking forward to our release from it. He has promised that in his timing he will come to judge the living and the dead. God is not subject to time, and he will free us from it when he sees fit, as he takes us beyond the resurrection of the body and into the life everlasting. But until then, we suffer. Until then, we live under his love while failing to love him and to love those around us. We break his commandments, and this is nothing other than what leads us to the death that stops us and stops our bodies. Right now, we are being taken through a time that calls us to look only to him, which is exactly how our lives should have looked before this time and should always look as we look to the return of our judge. Until that time, he promises that he does not leave us alone to struggle. He took on our human flesh so that we would have comfort and hope in the midst of the passage of time in these broken bodies and in this broken world. He is no stranger to what we now face and, in fact, has faced far worse than what we now experience or can even imagine. We are not orphans. We are not abandoned or left alone. Our lives are dismantled and our worship life has been disrupted. It has gone far longer than any of us could have expected or certainly would desire. I want to be in our sanctuary with each of you, and I very much look forward to that day, whenever it will be. But until then, we will continue to pray. We will pray to the Lord every day. We will ask Him for His mercy. We will stand on His promise, the cornerstone of our faith, given to us in holy baptism and renewed with the connection we have with Him from His altar in Holy Communion. At the same time, in the hope that we have, we will point those around us to what we know is ours and what we know is open to all people because of our Lord's incarnation, His perfect life and death, and of course, His glorious resurrection. We have not been left as orphans because He has called us by name and made us a part of His believing and eternal family. This same promise is good for anyone we know and love in this life. As God's people, living in the faith and hope He has given us, we must share it with those around us. By His grace, He can and will make them a part of this same family, leaving no one outside of His love and sharing with them as He does with each of us His perfect and eternal love. If we love Him, we will keep His commandments. When we fail to do this, we will lean on His strength, confess our sin, and know that He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And know also that He is able to do the very same for all people. Amen. At this time we will hear our hymn, number 821, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Jesus. 